The Korean War left the U.S. extremely sensitive about communist expansion in Asia. And in the mid-1960s, in a little-known corner of Southeast Asia, their new infantry superweapon, the space-aged M16, ended up battling its most deadly adversary, Russia's legendary AK-47, weapon of choice of the North Vietnamese. Both sides felt they had the winning ideology, and the technology of the weapons was a simple reflection of their global ambitions. The prize, in other words, was the world. Both sides already had accurate and reliable infantry rifles that had done great service in World War II. The bad news was they could only fire one bullet at a time. To fill the air with lead, the submachine gun was the weapon of choice. But unlike the rifle, hitting a target beyond 50 yards was more luck than judgment. The assault rifle, half machine gun and half rifle, was designed to do the job of both. The Soviet and American assault rifles were very different designs. As a test of whether communist or capitalist technology was better, Vietnamese combat conditions were ideal. You were not able to see your enemy. You were in a jungle environment where all you were seeing was muzzle flashes or maybe some smoke. You didn't have a clearly defined target, so you would have an area target which you would spray with ammunition to keep your enemy's head down. Basically, it's whoever lays down a heavier volume of fires who's going to win. It's firepower that counts. And with an assault weapon, you've got firepower. Firepower could keep you alive. And soldiers developed very close relationships with their guns. As an army infantryman, this was sort of like an extension of my arm. It was always close to me. I would never go anywhere or think about going anywhere without reaching for my weapon. Even the construction of the AK-47 and M16 revealed deep differences between East and West. In 1990, seven years before his death, M16 designer Eugene Stoner gave a rare interview with AK-47 designer Mikhail Kalashnikov. In it, he recalls how U.S. demands for a super light weapon forced him to make radical advances in the M16's construction. That meant choosing lightweight materials right from the beginning, aluminum in place of steel, fiberglass and construction in place of wood. This is really space-age stuff. It's made out of plastic. It's made out of composite material, early composites. The buffer that's in here is a composite. So it's, this is sort of space age. In the 1960s, the M16 looked like a kid's toy. We had nicknamed this thing the Matty Mattel, you know, made by a toy gun manufacturer. I mean, when it first came out, that's what it looked like. It looked like something that a kid would play with, and it was, you know, no wood. You know, and this, you know, we thought, oh, it's still cheap, cheap plastic, you know, this kind of thing. So for us initially, that was the joke. That was our, our toy gun. The Kalashnikov is a far more traditional gun. The AK-47 is of rather conventional design using common materials, steel and wood, and readily available machining technology. The parts are manufactured to uh, less precision, from an engineering standpoint, it is a uh, low-tech weapon. This means that for automatic fire, the M16 is much easier to control than the AK-47. Slowed down 14,000 times, it's clear that the kick or recoil of the high-precision M16 moves it very little. Not the AK-47. It's throwing itself around. Look at the end of the barrel. It's clearly flexing up and down. One reason for this wobbly performance is the way it works. What's happening when this is fired is, of course, the cycle rate's fairly high, and you've got a really big hunk of metal coming back, and it's slightly off-center. Not much, but slightly off-center. So th this thing's coming back and then coming back forward, so you've got really two violent acts going on. And then if you have the round going off, you have a third violent act going on. The M16, on the other hand, this is a much smoother operating weapon. Consequently, the accuracy on this 
in full automatic fire is a lot better than is the AK. An easy round one to the M16, a higher precision weapon and far easier to handle as a machine gun. Can the AK-47 claw ground back with its performance as a rifle, rated by accuracy, not controllability? We've come to Morris County, New Jersey. The Picatinny Arsenal is where the U.S. Army puts their small arms to the test. We've set up targets at about 200 yards. It's an easy distance for a decent rifle. First up is the M16. What we're looking for is grouping, how close the shots are to each other. Every shot strikes close to the heart in the kill zone. Now, the AK-47. Only one of the five shots even tags the lower left edge of the paper. Not one strikes the kill zone. And it's clear from the design of the sights that the American weapon was designed to be more accurate from the very start. The sights are very good. Uh, you have a little peep sight here in the back, okay, which you can use for short range. And what you could do is you can actually flip it forward. And if you look on the back, you can actually see an L. That's for long distance. In the front, you have just a post with what we call bunny ears, which flare out. And what you do is you center your post in the center of your uh, rear sight, and you put it right on target, and you fire, and you should hit target. The AK sight is very crude. It's not as good as the peep sights that the Americans have been using since World War II. You take your front post, and you line it up with the little notch right here, and the top of the front post and the top of this bar will be level and you set your target right on top of those three points. This weapon really isn't meant to shoot out 400 meters. You've got to have really good ammunition, a good barrel, uh, nice steady hand, a good eye, and no wind conditions to, to shoot out any distance like that. If you do hit somebody at that distance, it'll hurt, but uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to do it every time. Out in open terrain, that extra accuracy could give the M16 a decisive advantage. Round two to the M16, an easier machine gun, a more accurate rifle. The much like World War II rifle ammunition seemed an obvious choice for America's first lightweight assault rifle. But the powerful recoil of the old ammunition made their new featherweight M14 dangerously uncontrollable as a machine gun. This is so light, you cannot control it. So the, the, the first round, if you were to fire this fully automatically, the first round would be there, the second round would be there, the third round would be there. And anything after that, it's an anti-aircraft gun. To make a handheld automatic weapon, the designers would need ammunition with less recoil or kick. The gun's success would stand or fall on the design of the bullet. The Soviet solution was brutally simple. Take the heavy old rifle bullet and make it shorter and therefore lighter. The M16 uses a smaller, slimmer bullet. With far less recoil than the AK, the M16 gun can weigh barely two-thirds as much as the AK-47, which was exactly what the U.S. military wanted, as Eugene Stoner explained to AK-47 designer Mikhail Kalashnikov. Basically, they wanted the lightest weight system that they could get. They wanted a weapon that would weigh six pounds loaded with 20 rounds of ammunition. The weight was the driving emphasis on the whole design. In other words, there are a lot of things maybe you would like to do, but couldn't do because of the weight restraints. The Army people are the same everywhere. They want you to come up with weightless weapons, but there is a limit to everything. Yeah, they like to defy the laws of physics. <laughs> The tiny bullet that Stoner came up with to save weight 